Hi everyone. Welcome to Farm to Fork in Hunterdon County. I'm Sandra Gretzi, Family and Community Health Sciences Educator for Rutgers Cooperative Extension of Hunterdon County. And today we'll be talking about pumpkins. So I hope you caught my good colleague Megan Muehlbauer's video on Tuesday. She took us into the pumpkin patch and taught us lots of interesting facts about growing pumpkins, picking pumpkins. Um, I really have tried so hard to grow pumpkins in my home garden, so I think I need to pick Megan's brain a little bit more so that I can be a little more successful next season. But anyway, um, so today, what we're going to do is make an awesome Southwestern pumpkin hummus. Uh, but before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about using pumpkins in cooking. So as Megan said, pumpkins are a type of winter squash. And there are two types of, two main types of squashes that you may be familiar with. Are summer squashes like zucchini and yellow squash. And then many different types of winter squash like butternut, acorn squash, and pumpkins are in that group too. So winter squashes have a much harder rind or skin or shell, whatever you want to call it. Um, and they have a much longer growing season. So right about end of September through October, like Megan said, our winter squashes and pumpkins are getting ready to be picked. Uh, winter squashes are also super nutritious. They are really packed with a lot of great vitamins and minerals. And in particular for pumpkins, uh, the standout nutrients that pumpkins contain include fiber. So about a cup of pumpkin puree provides about six grams of total fiber. So that's a really nice big number. And the other standout nutrient in pumpkins, which is associated with their beautiful uh, orange color, is vitamin A. You can, uh, that same size serving of pureed pumpkin can provide more than 200% of your daily requirement for vitamin A. So it's super nutritious. And as a reminder, vitamin A is important for eye health and skin health, and uh, also for um, overall health as a um, anti-inflammatory. The particular plant pigment, the beta carotene that gives uh, pumpkins and other orange vegetables their beautiful color, that is sort of the precursor to making vitamin A. And uh, it's an antioxidant compound, a plant antioxidant compound, and is associated with uh, possibly cancer prevention and heart health, and then those other benefits to the skin and eyes and hair. So winter squash in particular, very nutritious. Uh, they also contain other uh, vitamins and minerals. Some of the minerals include potassium and iron and magnesium. And those are all associated with a healthy blood pressure and heart health. So there's lots of great reasons nutritionally to include winter squashes and pumpkins in your diet. And we're gonna do that today. So the first thing you need to know though for cooking, so there's the decorative aspects of winter squash, like putting a pumpkin out on your front porch for Halloween or using a, a, a winter squash in, a, in another decorative way or selecting the right one for cooking. So there are specific types of pumpkins that are better suited to making pies or uh, making pumpkin bread or doing what we're doing today, which is making a pumpkin hummus. So you wanna make sure you look for a pie pumpkin or a sugar pumpkin and um, some of the other uh, popular uh, names of pumpkins that are well known for baking and cooking, uh, Long Island cheese pumpkin, that's sort of a flat, almost a turbid looking shaped pumpkin or a Cinderella pumpkin. So if you're 
going to be using it for cooking and baking. Selecting the right pumpkin is important. So once you get your pumpkin home, then, so how do we approach getting it ready? So obviously, you have to wash it well. We're going to cut off this handle. I think Megan called it the handle. And we're just going to cut straight down, open it up in two halves, scrape out all those great pumpkin seeds, but don't throw them away because you can later go back and roast those seeds and you'll have another great treat. So don't throw the seeds away. And then one of the easiest things to do with these kinds of hard shelled squashes is to roast them. I like to roast my winter squashes. So once you get the seeds out, then you can cut it into smaller pieces. I mean, be careful because these things can be really hard, hard to get a knife through. So be careful with your fingers. And then just put it with its flesh down on a baking sheet. Parchment paper makes for easy cleanup. And then just roast it until the flesh is really soft. And then you're going to just scrape the flesh off of the rind and you can use it for whatever you want to use it for. So that's one way. Or you can do like I did for today, because I did not get that harvest of pumpkins that I was hoping for. You can go out and buy some pumpkin puree. Very easy. And this also freezes well. I made a test recipe last week for this recipe, and I did not use the whole can of pumpkin puree. So I froze it in one cup portions, put it in my freezer, took it out for today. So um, free pumpkin freezes well, squash freezes well, and even our finished hummus freezes well. Okay, so that's about pumpkins. Now let's get down to the recipe. So we're making a savory Southwestern pumpkin hummus. So why did I pick this recipe? Well, because I knew you could find a zillion recipes for pumpkin pie, pumpkin cake, pumpkin cookies, pumpkin bread, and those kinds of recipes. So I thought I would do something a little bit different and sort of uh, feature the versatility of pumpkin, but not with those traditional sweet pumpkin spices. So we're going to be using other warm spices, southwestern warm spices, like cumin. We're going to put in a little chili powder. I'm going to live dangerously and put in some cayenne pepper, just jazz it up. And aside from the spices, we're going to need a can of well-drained chickpeas. Now let me just say, when I was doing some research on this recipe, I found recipes for pumpkin hummus that included 100% pumpkin puree all the way up to a mixture like I'll be doing today. And for my personal taste and those of my family, I thought that the mixture of chickpeas and pumpkin was going to be a little bit more acceptable. But it's totally up to you how much pumpkin puree you want to add to your hummus. You, you could use a little, you could use a lot. I found the ratio that I liked the best was about one can of well-drained chickpeas and about a cup, maybe a little bit more of the pumpkin puree. That seemed to make a beautifully colored um, hummus. I could taste the pumpkin, but it had a nice base from the chickpeas. So, okay, pumpkin, whether you wanna bake, roast your own and then puree it or the easy way to go to the store and get some. Do not use pumpkin pie filling. There's always a warning about that in recipes. Don't use that. We want plain pureed pumpkin. Okay, so what are we gonna use to give it some uh, moisture? We're going to use fresh, fresh lime juice, a couple of tablespoons. We're going to add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. And the recipe that I was uh, working with called for some tahini. I only want to put in one or two tablespoons of tahini because yes, it does give it a very luxurious 
kind of a texture, but I don't want, I didn't want a very strong sesame flavor. I didn't want to hide the pumpkin flavor. So I found for my personal taste that about one to two tablespoons of tahini worked pretty well. Okay. And then, oh, garlic, roasted garlic. I have been loving roasting my garlic in advance and freezing it. I find that in these kinds of hummuses where I, I want to feature a certain flavor, like this pumpkin that I really want to come out, I don't want to have a bitter garlic aftertaste. So I have really been liking roasting a bunch of heads of garlic. Sometimes if I have the oven on and I'm doing winter squash, I will just roast in aluminum foil whole heads or whole cloves of um, whole heads of garlic and then pop them out and freeze them flat and individually so that I could just take out one or two or three and pop them into a recipe. So I'm going to be using roasted garlic, but you of course can use fresh garlic. Okay, so I think we are ready to get started. So I'm going to put my already rinsed and drained chickpeas right into my food processor. And this is one of these recipes that I love. Everything goes into this, very easy. I'm going to dump my pre-measured, so I know that I like about a cup of pumpkin. So if you're doing this for the first time, you might want to maybe do half a cup at a time and see if you like that. But I know that I really like pumpkin and it worked out great for me. So in it goes. Plus it's really nice addition. So our chickpeas have a lot of protein and our pumpkin has really healthy carbohydrates with all that fiber and all of those other great um, vitamins and minerals. Okay, so I'm going to blend this up just a little bit before I add my lemon juice and olive oil just to get it going. Okay, so we've already started pureeing them. They will puree down even much more than this. We're going to get it nice and creamy. But now I'm going to add, actually my lime juice, I said lemon juice, but I'm going to add about a half of this, so about a tablespoon at a time. I'm going to put in a good, good tablespoon of olive oil right now, and I might come back a little bit later and add a little bit more. And my tahini. I'm going to put about one tablespoon right now. And you know what? I'm going to put it all in. So I know that really does give a really velvety texture. Tahini is so rich in sesame oils. The texture is amazing. Okay, let's blend some more. See how we like that texture. really nicely. Now for the beautiful roasted garlic. It's so soft, it blends really nicely. You don't end up with pieces like you do when you try to use fresh garlic, and that's what I really like. I'm probably going to need some more liquid. going to add, coming together nicely. The color is beautiful, that beautiful pumpkin color. So I'm going to add the rest of my lime juice. Okay. Then we'll taste it and season it. Creamy. 
I'll show you the finished product when I'm done. It's a little hard to see here in the food processor. But I think it's time to season. So I, again, wanted to go a little easy on the seasoning so I didn't hide the pumpkin flavor. So I found that a teaspoon of cumin seemed to work nicely. You can add as much as you like. So I'm starting with a teaspoon. The chili powder also adds a little bit deeper color too in that mm, nice mix of uh, pepper flavors. So I'm going to add, I, I like this, I'm going to add maybe three quarters of a teaspoon. You really have a lot of flexibility here. And here's where you can live dangerously. I like spicy things, so I'm going to put in, it'll probably end up being about a quarter teaspoon of the cayenne pepper. Okay, for our final blending, you. I like it. I like my hummus thick enough to stay on whatever I am dipping it on. So if you like a really thinner uh, hummus, you could add a little, you can, you can change the texture by adding either more um, lime juice or more olive oil and or both. It's up to you. Let's take a little taste here. I taste the cumin. Taste a little bit of that hot pepper. Um, you can add salt and pepper to taste. I'm not going to add any salt right now, um, but you can certainly add salt and a, a sprinkling of fresh pepper would be nice too. But let me show you the final presentation. So I said that last week I made the test recipe and I froze the finished hummus. And my, I took it out and defrosted it last night to get ready for our video today. And I sprinkled some toasted pumpkin seeds on top. And I also put a little bit of fresh cilantro on top. You can also add the cilantro in if you really like it, but I'd have to tell you, it's not a favorite in my family. So I knew if I did that, that I'd be eating this entire bowl by myself. So you can use it as a garnish, you can chop it and add it to, you know, have it there when you're serving. But it's a beautiful presentation with the toasted pumpkin seeds. Get a good look at that. Toasted pumpkin seeds and the beautiful green cilantro on top. So I think the hummus, hummus is really a great way to experiment with different flavors and different seasonings. And using pumpkin in an unusual way, pairing it up with warm southwestern spices, is, is a really nice uh, snack idea. It's very healthy, loaded with nutrients. And I would serve that, uh, I will be serving this probably on Halloween, with um, whole grain tortilla chips or nice big chunks of sliced vegetables. So it might become your favorite um, seasonal pumpkin snack. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a try. Don't be, don't be shy. Don't be hesitant to uh, work with winter squashes if you have, you know, if you haven't done so. Really, once you are able to cut them, the roasting is really easy and they are so delicious that um, I think you'll find lots of uses for them. So um, there's plenty of time, as Megan said, to get out, enjoy the 579 Trail in Hunterdon County, locate some places to pick or buy your pumpkins and other fall vegetables. And Megan and I will be back with another great uh, featured produce 
later on in November. So like our Facebook page, you'll get updates on what we have planned. And I'll see you next time. Bye.